When I first dove deep into the hobby gaming in 2003, I discovered all sorts of games that I really wanted to get my hands on, but I could not find in US game stores, mostly because there were no English language editions of those titles. People had ordered them from overseas, translated the rules themselves, or found a translation on BoardGameGeek or elsewhere. And if you wanted a copy, well, you had to do the same thing, order overseas, or wait, and maybe an English language edition would be released. You just didn't know back then. It's kind of puzzling. We went through this period where you seem to have near simultaneous releases of all the big, big titles that you would expect, but now the market has grown to such a degree that we're kind of back at the early 2000s again, where a game comes out, Ganymede, for example, from French publisher, sorry, we are French, from designer Hope S. Huang. The game includes rules in French, English, and Korean, but it had no distribution in the US. It was only in France. And so, do you order it? Do you wait? Do you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna find out? I mean, thankfully, I work for BTG and we picked up copies at Spiel and I borrowed one from our own library, so I got access that way, but that doesn't necessarily help you. Now, Lucky Duck Games has announced that it will release the game in the US in early 2019. So, now we have a solution, but nine months ago, when we were first talking about the game, who knew? Didn't know what was gonna, go on. So it's this interesting cycle of release and mystery of when things are going to come up. Hmm. So as for this game, let me show you. Here are the components for Ganymede, which is for two to four players. Each player has their own individual board upon which you will track the movement of settlers who come in four colors of spacesuits, and you will be moving those settlers from Earth to Mars, to shuttles in orbit outside Jupiter's moon Ganymede, and then once those shuttles are filled, you'll be dropping those settlers off. And that is primarily how you will score points by completing and sending off those shuttles. You'll be getting the settler tiles by drafting them from this array, and then you will have Earth shuttles that move the settlers from Earth to Mars, and Mars shuttles from Mars to outside the orbit of Ganymede. People have compared Ganymede to Splendor in that the two games both have an array from which players draft over the course of the game. And it's true, visually they're very similar. You have something laid out, mostly you're going to be picking up a tile or a card on a turn and then doing something. That's reminiscent of Splendor, Ganymede has a bit more going on in that you'll have somewhat more complex turns and more challenges in doing what, what you want to do. These are the four starting settler tiles and they give you both a settler and one of the shuttles to Ganymede when you draft them. It's replaced by something random off the top of the deck. And in this case, you get either a blue settler or a point of reputation when you draft this tile, not both, except that sometimes you can get both as I'll explain in a moment. These are the shuttles from Earth to Mars and Mars to Ganymede, and they have requirements up top for these settlers that you will be moving from this particular location. So this one moves a purple settler from Earth to Mars, and that's it. All these other ones here have bonuses, but they're more challenging to do because they have certain color requirements that are more than just one purple. To start the game, each player is dealt four shuttle cards at random and chooses two of them to start on their player board, with the others being shuffled back into the deck. These Shuttles are worth a fixed number of points or a variable number of points depending on what you do over the course of the game. You start the game only with those two shuttles that you drafted initially. You have no reputation, no shuttles below your board, no settler tiles above it, and no settlers on your planets. Everything is going to come from you taking one of three actions on your turn, which are primarily drafting actions. So one of those is to draft a settler tile if I do that, I get whatever is on the tile. So in this case, a red settler and a shuttle, either one of the face-up ones or the mystery card at the top of the deck. Maybe I do that again on my next turn. I get a yellow settler, I get another ship. And now let's say I draft an earth shuttle. I can do that because this shuttle requires me to move a yellow and red settler from earth, which is shown on the back of the card, and I draft it from the earth row and they move to Mars. You get some bonus on the bottom here, which in this case is an adapt symbol. I can transform one of these settlers to be purple, or I can transform a purple settler to be a color of my choice. Why I would care to do that 
is because of the launch requirements for the shuttles. We got a very oddly functioning company here. This shuttle launches only if it has one of each color of settler, whereas this one launches only if it has three settlers of the same color. So those are reasons why you might want to change one color to another, but at this point, it doesn't matter. So maybe next turn I could draft a Mars shuttle. All right, shows Mars on the back. It moves red and yellow to the shuttles. You can move them to the same one or to different ones. So we do this. And then I get a bonus move action, but I have no one else to move. You can move from shuttle to shuttle, but I've got no reason to do that. So maybe I don't want to take this yet. I want to use my actions as efficiently as possible. So perhaps instead I will first draft another settler tile. And this is another way that you want to be efficient with your choices. If you match a symbol with something that you already have, you get to do this tile a second time. And if both of these were yellow, I would do this three times total. So I take this tile, I do it once, I'll take a yellow settler. And now because I have one yellow in here, I get to do one of these choices a second time. I can take another yellow settler or I can move somebody. So let me move this one to Mars. And now when I draft this shuttle, I move a red and yellow as I had planned to do initially, but now I get a free move action. I can move this one over here, and this one is two thirds of the way towards launch. And it says a red symbol, so I put it under the red one here. These colors are the same as these, but drafting a yellow shuttle does not count for the yellow up here. Bonuses for settler tiles are one thing, and there's a bonus for ships down here, which we'll see in just a moment. Let's say on the next turn, I draft this one, which is another yellow tile. I'll just throw this one away. I get three of these because I have three yellow tiles now. So I can take two blue settlers and a yellow one. Keep building things up here. The third action that's possible is that you throw away one to three settler tiles, so I could possibly reduce my ability to get bonuses, but you can take these actions here freely, whereas otherwise you're restricted by the settler tiles on display and the shuttles that are available to you. So in this case, I could throw away all three tiles and I get to take three actions that are shown here. I can add a settler to Earth. I can move a settler along the arrows here. I can adapt a settler to a different color. I can draft a shuttle, or I can increase my reputation. Let me do that. If I increase my reputation twice, which takes two of my actions, well, I'll get one point at the end of the game for having my cube in this zone. And if you land on a cog, you also get one of those actions. So I spent two actions to get an action, so I still have two actions left. I can move yellow, yellow. And now this shuttle is ready to launch because it has three settlers of the same color. My turn is over. I've done nothing else. So this launches. These get returned to the supply. This goes on the side. At the end of the game, I get two points for each settler tile I have. I'll have time to get more, so not a problem there. I then draft a shuttle card either from the display or the top of the deck, and then choose one from my hand to put out. And now I'm ready to go again. As soon as a player has launched four shuttles to Ganymede, the game ends at the end of that round. And since players primarily score points from those shuttles, you wanna be as efficient as you can and compound as much action into a single turn as possible by doubling up on the colors and the settler tiles, and by doing that with your shuttles as well, as I'll demonstrate. This is the main difference between Ganymede and Splendor, where yes, you're drafting things, but the actions compound and sort of escalate more than they do in Splendor. In Splendor, you get a discount. You're going to buy gems, you put them in front of you, and it gives you a discount off future purchases of the same color, but it's a sort of slow linear progression. Games of Ganymede that I've played have kind of gone on, people do bonuses, and then it just whoop, up to the end. So you have to prepare yourself and work to make that happen for yourself. The other main difference between Ganymede and Splendor is that the settlers are effectively money. You may not think of them that way, but they are. 
because initially you're drafting settler tiles and putting that money on earth. And you can't use a shuttle to move settlers from earth to Mars unless they're the right colors. So you're sort of buying a shuttle with the money on earth and then you move that money to Mars and then you have to get a different shuttle to move that money to the shuttles. And then you're buying a shuttle with three coins of the same color or one coin of all colors. It's a different way of looking at the game. More abstractly, they're not settlers anymore, they're just coins. But it, it shows the complication of this game versus Splendor. As simple as Ganymede is, it's more complicated because you've got this money moving through the system. And you might want to launch a shuttle at a particular time, but if you don't have the money of the right color sitting there, you can't make it happen. So then it's going to slow you down. So you're trying to combo everything together the right way. You see if you can make that happen. You're a little hamstrung on which shuttle cards are up there. If the colors don't match well, you got to... You, you have to plan for that as much as you can and backtrack with that and throw away the subtler tiles to adapt or to move or to add someone to the board so that you can keep everything moving in the right direction towards Ganymede. I've advanced a few turns in the game. I've drafted more settler tiles. I have a shuttle that took some people to Mars and now I continue from this point. So perhaps I draft a shuttle, an Earth shuttle, mind you, that moves blue and yellow to Mars and just as you get a color bonus when drafting settler tiles, you also get a bonus with shuttles. This is my second blue shuttle, so I get to do this move action twice. And I can divide it up among different settlers or just take one. So this guy hops immediately from Earth to this Ganymede shuttle. Maybe in my next turn, I draft this one, which is a Mars shuttle which lets me move these three from Mars to a ship. It's my second yellow card, so I get this bonus twice to reputation, which gives me a bonus action, which I will use to alter this blue settler into a yellow one. It's a white adapt action, so you can do any color to any color. My turn's over, because I did everything. This shuttle's full, and now it launches. So these are removed. This comes over here on the side. I draft a ship card and put out something else. So this shuttle is worth six points, but only if I have one of each color shuttle here, which right now I don't. So this is worthless at the moment, but we can make it worth something. So maybe on a future turn, I'll now draft this purple shuttle, which only just moves this one person to Mars but it gives me a purple one. Let's say I throw these two away to give me a yellow settler and then move it. And now subsequent turn, I take this white one, which moves a yellow and a settler of my choice. I get a free move action, which doesn't really matter because this shuttle is full, so it launches. And when you complete all five colors, you get a bonus launch, whether or not the shuttle is full. So immediately this one launches, this is returned to the supply. I have four shuttles and we'll end the game at the end of this current round. There's an overview of Ganymede, which I played five times on a copy from the BGG library, once with two players and twice each with three and four players. There's no difference in player count except the number of settlers in the game. So there's seven each with two players and 10 with three and 13 with four. We've never hit a settler shortage yet. We have not run out of a color, although in theory it's possible that no yellow settlers are available. So you have to not get one if you take a tile. And so there's a shortage and of course it's gonna be hard to do anything and you have to adapt. Haven't had that yet. Instead, each game has been very tight where you are just trying to do the most you can with every single action. So in the example game I had, I chose to throw away settler tiles to get something done that possibly I couldn't do otherwise. That is, draft a yellow settler and then move it over to Mars. Maybe I couldn't do that with the tiles on display or the shuttles that are available there, but by doing that, I could end the game quickly. And then the problem is, 
I only have one settler tile there, so now my shuttle that gives me two points per settler tile is only worth two points instead of possibly six. So you make these choices based on what other people are doing and you're stealing tiles and shuttles that they might want. Although it's difficult to do that since again, you do have those color restrictions. I can't just take something as in Splendor where you can draft a card along with a gold coin and just hold that card in your hand and maybe you spend it and maybe you don't. But here you can't do that. I can't burn a shuttle for no reason. I can't just blow it up. I'm not a malicious person that way. Not in the game. So you have to try to figure out in advance what people can do to thwart you. What colors do they have available on Mars? What do they have here? What are they going to do? What do you think they're going to do ahead of you? And so you try to see your way through that path of what's available in terms of the shuttles. Those shuttles don't change much in a two-player game. So that's good and bad, right? You have to make the right choices on the tiles you're drafting and the actions you're taking to use what's available to you because they're not going to cycle through as they do in a four-player game where you want something, okay, well, it's gone and someone else uses it and this, that, and the other, but you will have more things coming. You kind of more at the luck of the draw of what's coming up there, whereas in two, it's a little more hardline planning. Either way, the game plays relatively quickly because you're taking these minuscule actions, draft a tile, draft a shuttle, throw away tiles to do something. That's it. And yet it, they add up and they compound more and you start doing two or three things at a time. So I've seen uh, heavy drafting action where someone would have four shuttles of the same color and then so they're jumping up a lot in reputation where you can max out at six points on that. In addition to launching the shuttles where you get a variable number of points for many of them, sometimes scoring based on the colors of shuttles or the color of the settlers on the shuttles that you've drafted. You're just rocketing through there. And then any settlers on your shuttles that have not launched are worth a point each. But that's kind of sad. That's like, you didn't really do your job. You got them almost there. And then you just stranded them. So, ugh, not, not a great job, Eric. But maybe you'll do better next time. Next time you launch.